All right, hello and good afternoon. Um, and welcome to another episode of Move with the Doc. I'm Dr. Rupa Shah, board certified family physician and obesity medicine expert um, and health and wellness coach. And today we're gonna talk about something um, that I think most of us can really relate to, um, and that's hypertension. So um, I wanna just really review why it's important, what to look for, um, a little bit about treatment, what things we can do to improve it if we do have high blood pressure. Um, so hopefully just to give you a little bit of overview and some of my own kind of thoughts on it as well. So as always, feel free to move, to stretch, walk, you know, do some yoga poses, just anything to get out of your chair this afternoon um, and get a little movement um, into your day as, as I talk to you about high blood pressure. So Hypertension, otherwise known as high blood pressure, um, is a very common condition that most of us um, know somebody who has it, or maybe you have it yourself, but it affects all the arteries in the body. When you have hypertension, what's actually happening is your heart, you know, which is the, the main pump of the, of the whole body, really has to work harder um, to get the blood out to the rest of your body. Um, and the force of that blood then is pushing against your, um, against the walls of your arteries in your heart. Um, and that over time is just not a good thing. Okay. The American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association divide the blood pressure. Um, they've kind of come up with these different like stages. You don't have to know all of those specifically. What I really just want you to come away knowing today is that normal blood pressure, um, a normal blood pressure, what we're striving for is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury or lower. So 120 over 80, that's your goal. If you're there, if you're lower than that, you're doing, you're doing great. Okay. But what people don't realize is that elevated blood pressure, the next category, that's where that top number, what we refer to as our systolic blood pressure ranges from about 120 to 129. Okay. Which, you know, some of the, some of us have seen those numbers in the office and you may think, oh, it's no big deal. It may not be, but over time that can be problematic. So when that systolic number is from 120 to 129, um, or the bottom number um, is above 80, that's an elevated blood pressure. That means you're kind of on the watch list and you just want to be careful. Stage one, hypertension. When truly we can say, okay, you've got the diagnosis of hypertension, the top numbers are going to be about 130 to one, um, 139, and the bottom number is going to be between 80 to 89. That's stage one. Stage two, as you would guess, the top number is above 140 consistently, or the bottom number is consistently over 90 millimeters of mercury, okay? But 120 over 80 is our goal. Um, just to throw this in, but any blood pressure, if you ever see your blood pressure over 180, over 120, we consider this a hypertensive emergency. Um, in this case, we usually do recommend you be seen, especially if you've got any other symptoms with this, uh, chest pain, chest pressure, feeling a little short of breath, a bad headache, vision changes, dizziness, um, any numbness, tingling, we can see folks um, have strokes and things like that when their blood pressure gets um, kind of above that 180 to uh, 180 over 120 range. It really is getting into the danger zone. You can also have that reading without any symptoms and it may not be a medical emergency, but if you have any of those symptoms with the high blood pressure, definitely seek care in the emergency room. So quick blurb, because I get this asked a lot. What about if my blood pressure is too low? Um, you know, it's, they cut people come in and their blood pressure is below 120 over 80. And they're like, oh man, my blood pressure is too low. Is that a problem? Generally? No, it's excellent. It's wonderful. It means you have an efficiently pumping heart and it's exactly what we want. Um, but if you have low blood pressure and you have symptoms, um, you're dizzy a lot, you're lightheaded, you feel like your heart's skipping a beat, you have blurry vision, um, you feel like you're going to faint, um, things like that, then you definitely want to talk to your physician about that because that could be signs of some other underlying medical issue or an underlying cardiac issue um, that would need to be looked at. But generally, the lower the blood pressure, the better off you are. So... The one thing I wanted to address, um, because I love kind of talking about this to my patients, because I think blood pressure is something we don't often think about, or you walk into the office, you get your vitals checked, and you, you may walk out not understanding what that number means. Um, 
but we all we we often call hypertension the silent killer. And and why? Why is that term used? Because most people with high blood pressure don't have symptoms, but it is having a profound effect on your heart over the number of years that you have it. Um, and the blood pressure could be reaching really dangerously high levels. Um, so again, you could have high blood pressure for years have no symptoms, no chest pain, no headaches, no dizziness, nothing, and just never know you have it. Again, why it's important then to come in to see your physician um, and get a physical exam every year, um, because that's the point in time in which you can know if you should be watching it. Again, if your blood pressure is over uh, 120 over 80, or if it's already in the stage one or stage two um, ranges, okay? Um, so, What's, um, I kind of just want to talk about to the silent killer aspect of it. So what's actually happening um, when we have high blood pressure? So remember the heart is a muscle, okay? Um, so the ventricles, you know, have that thick myocard myocardium. When you have that high blood pressure, your heart, just like any other organ, it's very adaptive and, and very strong. So just like um, if we went to the gym and we had, you know, you worked out your biceps every day, right? So what's going to happen? Your bicep is going to get bigger, right? Which for the bicep is a good thing. Um, you're getting muscular hypertrophy, we call that. That's good for the bicep muscle or any other big muscle in your body. It's not good for your heart. And that's why we call it the silent killer, because what's happening is the heart is compensating by pushing harder and harder against the high pressure to get the blood out. And it's the muscle, the heart is actually enlarging. Okay, so your left ventricle, which is doing, doing most of the work uh, during systolic blood pressure, is actually enlarging over time. Once the muscle can no longer enlarge uh, or, or thicken, I should say, hypertrophy, then it starts enlarging. Now your pump is no longer as effective, and this can then lead further down the road to it being an ineffective pump heart failure, when you've heard of heart failure, um, a lot of times this is a result of longstanding um, hypertension that either hasn't been treated adequately or just hasn't been treated at all. So your heart then can no longer pump effectively. So that's again, why it's the silent killer. You're not gonna have any symptoms that this is happening until you may, as it gets further down the road, you might start feeling like, oh, I'm really winded. You know, I can't, I can't exercise. I can't go up steps. Um, so just to kind of keep that in mind of why we call it that. So what are some causes of hypertension? So for most people, unfortunately, there's no cause, right? We call it essential hypertension. It just means there's no identifiable cause. Um, and we, we like to call that either, like I said, essential or primary hypertension. It um, can happen over years. It can happen gradually. Um, and it could be genetic. So there may be a lot of people in your family that at a certain age in their late 40s, early 50s might just all develop high blood pressure. So again, it's a really good idea to come in for your physicals and get that looked at and just know your numbers, know what your top number is and your bottom number is. Okay. Real brief, there are causes of what we call secondary hypertension. And I've definitely had patients who have had this. So that means that there's an underlying cause for your high blood pressure. And the high blood pressure is a symptom of something else underlying, okay? Um, this type of blood pressure can happen really suddenly. You know, people come in like, I never had high blood pressure. And all of a sudden it's, I have stage two or three hypertension. Um, this also tends to happen in younger people. So if you're in your... 20s, 30s, and all of a sudden you have high blood pressure, let's look into that. That may not be normal. That may be secondary hypertension. There may be something else going on, which is quite different than somebody who's had some slowly trending up blood pressures and now they're 50 years old. You know, that's more the primary hypertension, essential hypertension, the genetic kind of type. But secondary hypertension, again, younger people, more sudden, um, and we want to look into that. So some causes for secondary hypertension. I don't expect you to know these, but just things to kind of think about. And maybe if any of these things run in your family or you have risk factors, something to think about. Um, a common cause of secondary hypertension is adrenal gland tumors. Uh, that's that little gland that sits on top of our kidneys. Remember, adrenal glands produce catecholamines, adrenaline-like substances. So they secrete more catecholamines, cortisol. What does that do? It raises our blood pressure. So we've seen people with adrenal tumors that suddenly come in with super high blood pressure. Rare, very rare, but can happen. Um, 
people have congenital heart defects, of course, they can develop hypertension early. Um, cough and cold medicine. So if you're sick, you know, if you've had a rough winter, you've been taking a lot of pseudoephedrine, pseudofed products, decongestants, this can raise your blood pressure. Um, and sometimes actually to very dangerously high levels. So we have to be very cautious with those. Um, Pain relievers can also cause high blood pressure. Birth control pills, as we know, can do this. Um, and of course, don't forget our stimulants, you know, Adderall, um, those types of medications, weight loss medications like Ventermine is a stimulant as well. Um, and don't forget also about supplements you take. There are many supplements. I always like to ask my patients what supplements they're taking, especially if you're taking any diet, uh, weight loss types of supplements. A lot of those have stimulant-like herbs in them. So it may not say it's a stimulant, but it might say some um, type of herb that you might not be familiar with, but all it is, is a stimulant. And all of a sudden we see your blood pressure rising. Um, don't forget, a lot of people don't realize that chronic use of ibuprofen, Aleve, what we call NSAIDs. Um, if you're taking these three, four times a week or more over a long period of time, this can bump up your blood pressure and cause hypertension. Um, of course, illegal drugs, cocaine, amphetamines um, can do this too. Sleep apnea, this is my favorite one. People don't realize that if you have obstructive sleep apnea, if you're a snorer, if you're waking up a lot at night, you're not getting good quality sleep and you're really tired during the day, get checked for sleep apnea. This over time, we know can put a strain on your heart because you're getting hypoxic, your oxygen levels dropping when you're sleeping, and this can lead to hypertension over time. So. And then the last one I'll mention, um, thyroid problems. Hyperthyroidism can also lead to elevated blood pressures. So let's talk a little bit about what some of the risk factors for hypertension are. Um, now we mentioned again, essential hypertension, it can just happen, right? And usually it's as people age, um, usually it'll hit around the mid 60s. That's that's kind of, you know, up until 64, we don't see it too much, but after 65, we see it especially more common in men. Um, and again, women as well can develop this uh, as we go into menopause. So family history, I mentioned that before, if you've got a lot of folks in your family that start developing high blood pressure um, or have heart attacks or history of heart failure, we really want to be watching you. Um, being overweight, we know that obesity and excess weight can cause your blood pressure to rise. Um, but on the flip side of that, I always like to tell patients that even a small amount of weight loss, 5%, 10% can really help lower that blood pressure. Uh, we know tobacco use, vaping, um, that's going to raise the blood pressure. Salt, you know, it's, um, it's a common one, right? We don't realize how much salt or sodium, actually, if you look at sodium content, of a lot of the different foods that we eat. Um, so I always tell patients, read labels. A lot of those canned foods, frozen foods have so much sodium in them. Sodium in them. Um, and if you're eating a lot of those, that over time can, can raise your blood pressure. Don't forget about alcohol, drinking too much alcohol. Uh, typically we say if you're drinking more than three to four times a week, um, this can raise your blood pressure over time. Um, stress. So this is always a little controversial. It's like stress can you know, cause hypertension. Well, it can raise your blood pressure. Short-term stress, high levels of stress can temporarily increase our blood pressure. So if I see people who are really having a hard time at work or with family issues and their blood pressure is really quite high, I definitely watch them to see um, if it's going to come back down. Because if you have chronic stress over a long period of time, then we need to treat that blood pressure. If it's short, short-lived, you know, stress, and we see it kind of come down after like a month or two, you know, we can we can continue to monitor you. But don't forget that that chronic stress can really lead to some changes and, and lead to high blood pressure. And I have also seen it where it almost can um, unmask that essential hypertension a bit earlier. You know, it might be that it really runs in your family, but most people don't get it until their mid fifties or sixties, but then I'll see maybe a 50 year old, you know, woman come in with really high blood pressure, who's under a lot of stress. Um, and sometimes it can just happen a little bit earlier for that person. So, um, white coat hypertension is something I just wanted to mention here because white coat hypertension refers to the fact that 
you you get, and I just had a gal yesterday who had this. Um, when you come in for your office visit, you're so nervous and stressed by the doctor wearing a white coat, which most of us don't wear, but just the act of walking into the office, getting weighed, getting your vitals, the clinic setting, all of that can cause uh, what we call white coat hypertension, which is really not hypertension, okay? It's just a temporary elevation of your blood pressure. The best thing to do is if you get real nervous about coming into your doctor's office, get a home blood pressure cuff. That's what I tell my patients. Get a home blood pressure cuff and take it yourself at home. Get an arm cuff, not the wrist cuffs, um, and get an automatic cuff um, and start taking your readings morning, afternoon, evenings. Take it at different times just to make sure that your blood pressure is normal and it's only high when you go into the doctor's office. So, um, Okay, so I talked a little bit uh, earlier about uh, hypertension being the silent killer. Um, and again, just that excessive pressure that it puts on all the arteries in our body and how that can then damage the different blood vessels in, in all like different organs, not just the heart. So people think like hypertension only affects my heart. Um, this is not true. So again, sort of hearkening back to when we talked about diabetes and how diabetes affects all the blood vessels in your body. So does high blood pressure. So we have small blood vessels in our eyes. So you can develop diabetic or sorry, hypertensive changes to the blood vessels in your eyes. Um, we have medium sized blood vessels that go to our kidneys. So we can damage our kidneys over time with untreated high blood pressure. Um, we already know we have larger uh, vessels in our heart. Those can also of course be damaged. Um, and the largest vessel in our body is the aorta. And we can see the aorta dilating in some people with untreated high blood pressure. And that dilation is called um, an aortic aneurysm. Um, well, the dilation is called a dilation, but if it dilates too much, it can turn into an aneurysm where the blood is not going through the right uh, lumen of the vessel, and then it can rupture. So of course, people have died of um, abdominal aortic aneurysms or the triple A uh, when that bursts or if it bursts in your chest. So again, these are all changes that can happen from having high blood pressure. Um, again, what are some other complications of uncontrolled high blood pressure? Uh, we've kind of maybe touched on it, but a stroke. Uh, so um, having a very high blood pressure, you can can lead to a stroke, the type of stroke that can either be an embolus from one of your vessels in your carotids, um, but really high blood pressure, you could just have an artery that ruptures in the brain and it's a hemorrhagic stroke, the type that where you bleed into your brain. And those are quite devastating strokes for people. Uh, we just mentioned aneurysms, okay. Um, there is, uh, I'll just mention it super quick, uh, because there is a screening guideline to screen for the AAA that I just mentioned, the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, it's only, uh, the screening is recommended only for men uh, ages 65 to 75 who have ever smoked, okay? So uh, they just found that these men are at very high risk for, for having a, a AAA that could rupture. And so an abdominal uh, aortic um, ultrasound is recommended for, for folks. So talk to your physician if you're a man between 65 and 75 who's ever smoked, because you should definitely have one ultrasound to make sure your aorta is not dilated. Um, I talked really early on, um, heart failure. The heart, um, when you have the high blood pressure, your heart's working harder to pump the blood. Uh, again, first you'll get that left ventricular hypertrophy, and eventually the heart begins to dilate and can no longer pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. Um, the fluid can then back up into your lungs, and that's congestive heart failure. Okay. Um, I just mentioned kidney problems. You can this can lead to kidney damage. Um, one way to know if your kidneys are being damaged by your high blood pressure um, is by your um, the panel blood called the basic metabolic panel. There's going to be a creatinine value in there and a GFR, a glomerular filtration rate. So if that's going down, if your GFR is going down, your creatinine is going up and you've had years of high blood pressure, now your kidneys are starting to show the effects of it. So we, we don't want that. 
Um, again, I mentioned that the eyes, you can get little micro hemorrhages. So if your vision is not quite as clear as it used to be, or you're losing vision in one eye, definitely need to see an ophthalmologist who can do a dilated retinal exam and look in the back of your eyes to make sure the blood vessels all look healthy. Um, wanted to mention real quick, because we forget that high blood pressure can even lead to dementia. So, um, as we get narrowing or blocking of the arteries, uh, we get limited flow to our brain, okay? So this is a type of dementia we call vascular dementia. And we can see this on people's MRIs um, as they'll kind of describe it as these small vessel ischemic changes. What does that mean? It just means you've had years of un uncontrolled hypertension that is just causing small little changes in the frontal lobe, which can impact memory, concentration, um, and it just basically has been interrupting blood flow to your brain for long enough that you'll start seeing some of these small changes of vascular dementia. Um, so another really good reason to know your numbers and to get your blood pressure, blood pressure checked, okay? Um, and I just wanna end, uh, I talked a lot about complications, what to look for, primary and secondary hypertension, but just to really end on like things that you can do, um, to lower your blood pressure without medication or to make sure that you don't develop high blood pressure, okay? So first thing, as you would imagine, is to have a normal body weight, right? Um, we know blood pressure increases as people's weight increases. And we also know that weight loss is one of the most um, effective ways to lower our blood pressure. Again, we don't need to have a normal BMI. We just need to lower our current weight by maybe five to 10% to get a drop in um in our systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So uh, really kind of a key, a key uh, piece of information. Uh, regular exercise, as you would imagine, uh, can lower blood pressure about by about five to eight millimeters of mercury. Now that may not sound like a lot, but if you think about it and you're just in that, not even the stage one hypertension, but if you're only just in the elevated blood pressure category um, where your blood pressures are trending above the 120 over 80 range, then regular aerobic exercise can really help to get you right back down, okay? Um, walking, jogging, biking, swimming, any anything like that um, is really going to be good for the heart, okay? And even strength training, they have shown that strength training and weights can also help lower the blood pressure, so it doesn't just have to be aerobic. Um, diet, of course, can help lower your blood pressure, uh, as you might imagine, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, uh, low fat dairy, um, and low saturated fat diet. You've heard of maybe the DASH diet that you can Google and just kind of see, and the Mediterranean diet, really great diet for folks that are trying to lower their blood pressure. So another thing I'll mention quick is potassium. So potassium in your diet uh, really can lessen and kind of balance out the effects of the sodium, okay, the salt on the blood pressure. So the best sources of potassium in your diet um, are going to be fruits and vegetables, okay, rather than just taking. So I'm not advocating for anyone to take a potassium supplement, but fruits and vegetables are higher in potassium um, and could really, could maybe help lower the blood pressure by about four to five millimeters of mercury. So not dramatic, um, but just an important mineral to kind of, uh, important vitamin to be um, aware of. So, and again, to piggyback on that, try and reduce your salt and your sodium in your diet. So read labels, read cans, um, and try not to get more than, I would say, probably uh, two grams of sodium per day. And that's kind of the, the max that I would, I would say. Um, of course, processed foods are going to have higher amounts of sodium. Um, try not to add a lot of salt, you know, take that salt shaker off your dining table. So you're not even tempted. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is limiting alcohol. Of course, uh, you know, we said even three to four drinks per week can start raising your blood pressure. So if you're already at that mark and you're borderline every time you go into your doctor's office, think about cutting back on that. Um, couple just quick things, good sleep. We forget, and I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about sleep apnea, you don't have to have sleep apnea to develop high blood pressure, but even poor quality sleep, not getting enough sleep at night can raise our blood pressure because it's still a stress on our body, okay? Um, so if you have insomnia, if you have restless legs or something that's really impacting your sleep, talk to your physician about it because it is so important, especially as you get older, to have good quality sleep. 
um, and stress reduction. We all have stressful jobs. Um, you know, we're in a culture where we're just always on the go. Um, we never turn off our emails and all of this really can put us in a state of chronic kind of, I call it like, um, adrenal fatigue as you know, people might call it, but it's just a state of, um, elevated adrenaline cortisol. And as we mentioned, that is, um, kind of that flight or fight response that's always activated and that can raise our blood pressure. So things that you can do, um, you know, find things that you can do um, at the end of the workday, weekends, exercise is of course a great way, meditation, um, mindfulness. These, these are, you know, buzzwords really popular, but there is science behind them and they do lower your blood pressure. So it's a good way to combat um, a really stressful week is to really do something to kind of offset that um, on the weekends. So Finally, um, if you have a history of high blood pressure in your family and you don't get into the physician a lot, um, get a home blood pressure cuff. They're, they're not super expensive, but get a good quality one, keep it at home and occasionally check your blood pressure. If you think that you're seeing some elevated readings that are in the 130s, over 90s, um, take your home blood pressure cuff into your doctor's office when you go, have them check it with with their cuff and then have them check it with your home blood pressure cuff. This will allow you to see how well your own cuff, how accurate it is, um, and just can allow you to continue to check your blood pressures at home. So I always tell my patients, um, if you, if whether or not they have high blood pressure or not, um, you know, if they have it, I definitely tell them, bring your cuff in every time that you come so that I can take your blood pressure with my cuff and their cuff in the office to see how they're doing. So um, again, if you get a home blood pressure cuff, do not get the automated wrist cuffs. Those aren't accurate and will read, um, higher than a, a nice, um, arm cuff. So invest in a good one. Um, so that's what I have for you today. Thank you for joining in. I hope you learned a little bit about hypertension, what to look for, um, and that you will now know what your blood pressure numbers are. So see you next time.